Good morning. My name is Rebel and I'm the Rebel Reseller and today I'm going to be doing a what sold video for last week which would have been January 24th through the 27th so Monday through Thursday. Fewer sales but some good sales. How about that? So I'm still happy. You know when you're dealing with your sales yes you're going to have some pitiful days like one day I sold 17 things, the next day I shipped 5 things, and then yesterday I shipped 25 things, which one of them included 15 items, and then today I had 12, I think. So, you know, there's days, but you got to think of the big picture. Now, I have like a, a goal in mind what I want to make each week as far as gross. Um, and then some days it says I've made it, some days I've far exceeded it, and then there's some days it's, but overall, my 30 day is where I like to see it. So I'm still good. So you just got to keep that in mind. Um, and I think I enjoyed Wednesday's working live. So I, I'm hoping to keep that going with other viewers joining me also. Um, I know Lori, we had some technical difficulties, mainly Robin, Ro Robert, but um, <laughs> Lori's going to be joining me, I think, Wednesday. I, I want to do it at like 11 this time to see if I can get, you know, it not be so early for the West Coast people. And then we'll just kind of play it by ear. I liked doing my shipping during that time. So that's what I'm going to do again. Um, but my mail carrier usually comes about that time, so we'll just have to take it in ourselves, which is fine. And then, I guess my topic before I get started on the items that sold, somebody had asked about returns. Now, I do free returns, and I do the 30 days free returns so that I can get the um, top-rated seller discount. It's 10% off of your final value fees. And that can be big, especially for, um, like me, I sell quite a bit. And so, right now, I looked, last year I had 27 returns, five of which I think they never did return. And of the rest, I had a few broken, quite a few that were um, changed my mind or didn't fit because we just started selling clothes. Um, and then, of course, I had a few that, you know, I sent the wrong thing and I made it up to them by sending them the correct thing and letting them keep the wrong thing, that types of stuff. But, again, big picture, if you're shooting for top-rated seller and trying to get the discount, let's just give ballpark numbers. So, let's say you sell 100000 a year. Your fees, 12%, you know, it can be more but let's just go with 12%. That's 12,000. 10% of that is 1,200. So that's about $100 a month. There's no way my returns are costing me more than $100 a month. So I'm good. It's part of business. It's going to happen for legitimate reasons. Um, and then you've got those buyers that are just scammy. They just are. I'm facing one right now, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but it's just part of doing business. If I didn't offer free returns, I'd probably get a whole lot more um, item not as described. Right now, you know, they just say, I changed my mind. I found a better price. It doesn't matter. Again, I'm still, I think, far ahead because I um, get the top rated seller discount on um, fees. Just my, right now, I, I went and looked. The last 90 days, I've already had 10, but that was Christmas time. I sold more. You know, I had that lady who bought the doll, who broke it, you know, those kinds of things. She had opened a return on it. So, you know, those all count in it. But overall, my return rate right now is 0.8. I tried to find what the number is. What's the number that starts affecting your account? I couldn't figure it out. 
um, in just the few minutes that I tried to do it before this. Um, but I'm sure I'm fine. I'm still top rated seller. So, you, you know, I know, believe me, I get mad. I get mad when I have returns, especially for, you know, changed my mind. Those are irritating. But the only thing I could say is a lot of times they get put on my block bidder list because, you know, if you make the transaction unpleasant for me, I have the same right to block you as you do to, you know, leaving me negative feedback or whatever. But a lot of times also, if you're a top rated seller, you offer free returns and then you get a negative feedback or whatever, it's, you know, eBay has you back and then they usually will re, um, remove them. So it is what it is. That's my, my two cents on returns. You know, if you're top rated and you want to get that 10%, just do it. There, most people are honest, most. All right, so I've got all um, I've got all five again, all five platforms. I did start listing on Poshmark, but I've only put like 20 things on there, and it was all toys. I plan on putting most of my clothes on Poshmark, but I just got to find the time to cross list. I may have Robert do that, um, but yeah, it is what it is. So now I've got six platforms going. And, you know, eBay's always going to be, everything starts on eBay, so it's always going to be my biggest platform and my favorite. All right, let's get started. My first item, Gooned. I just thought that's hilarious because I've mentioned this before. I've always thought it was Gooned. I'm wrong. I'm going to still call it Gooned, though, because gun just doesn't sound right. All right, this first item is a baby gooned Huggy Buddy Lovey. I love loveys. Pick them all up. Some are my low dollar stuff or my bread and butter. And then there's ones like this. This sold for $24.95. If you're new to my channel, I don't offer free shipping. So when I say something sold for $24.95, the buyer also paid shipping. All right, next item, Hallmark mug. I remember picking this up recently at an estate sale. I just thought it was unique because it had the little cover for it. Um, this was just had Bible verses on it from 1985. I probably paid a dollar at an estate sale and it sold for $12.50. I mentioned that I had these boomerangs listed in one of my recent hauls because I found another Discovery Toys item and I said, I'll go ahead and put it, it was a little octopus with a little uh, like cord on the top that you could put the boomerangs through and then hold the boomerangs through and then it could attach to a stroller or whatever so you don't lose it. And then the boomerangs sold. I took a best offer of these for $6. It was an incomplete set, but I did have the original box and um, instructions. This is an animal adventure Reindeer, of course, I had to put in moose, reindeer, and deer from 2020. I believe I got these at our trip, our sourcing trip to um, St. Louis and Nashville. I think they're like the feature picture on one of my hauls. But these are from Animal Adventure, and I sold this one for $13.75. I like Animal Adventure, and even though this is 2020, it's still, I think, sold for a decent amount. This is a Russ Bear, and it was from, exclusive for a Hess department store. I don't remember that. Um, I've probably mentioned this before. I didn't grow up in the States. I grew up mostly in Europe. I'm an army brat, so I don't remember a lot of the older department stores. But somehow, I've ended up with three of these, and I've sold the first one, probably got them all at the same place, uh, you know, in a state sale or whatever, and I sold the first one for $11.91. Now, I probably had a lesser, I mean, like an 8% sale going that week, and that's why now I've got a 10%, and the price is a little bit less. Fiesta Scruffy Narwhal Well. Scruffy is almost always on these tags 
from Fiesta when they look like this. I'm guessing it's just the way the fabric looks. But I've sold two things this week that are that were marked scruffy. This was the Narwhal Well, and it sold for $9.15. And then I have a llama, I think, somewhere in here. This is an Oster Osterizer Blender. We picked this up at an estate sale for $5. I don't think it's very been very long. Um, but when I was doing my research on this, the, the glass dome looked different than all the others that I could find listed. So I'm not sure if it was a replacement or this one's just more unique. I really liked the texture on this. It just kind of really looks vintage-y. But it worked, it fit, um, and I took a best offer of $19 on it. it. I didn't have it listed very long. But this kind, this bottom here, it looks like a beehive. So a lot of people were calling it a beehive blender. But those aren't fun to pack. Thankfully, Robert had pre-packed that for me. This is Gitsy. Now, I just recently sold... Um, a hand puppet from that same brand. I had never heard of it, and now I have found a couple of things. This was a little teal rabbit. I think it was also from our sourcing trip, and it sold for a best offer of $15. I have been sending out offers, a lot of offers. Now, I wake up most mornings, and I have anywhere from 30 to 60, sometimes 80 of those listings that eBay says, somebody's watching it, send them an offer. And I've just been doing that first thing in the morning and, and throughout the day. And it's usually one of the last things I do before I quit for the day. And they don't all pan out, but I've been selling quite a bit. The fact that this says $15, a lot of times I, I'll make it a whole number or it'll be like $15.25 because my shipping for first class items ends with $0.75. Cents. $4.75, $5.75, $6.75. Um, but I've been sending out a lot, and I'm getting a, a lot of older stuff. I'm really sending out good offers, and it's, it's panning out for me. And I think that's what I need to be doing right now and, you know, just trying to get this inventory moving. This is Cabbage Patch Kids. I want to say this was from, like, early 2000s. I do not remember. I didn't write a date on there, so it shouldn't be on. It's not on there. Um, but... I, I sell a lot of Cabbage Patch dolls. This one actually made a sound. I think it, it was actually in the bib that was on it. But I sold it for $24.79. So definitely these more unique Cabbage Patch dolls. But I do well with the newer ones that are like 9 or 10 inches and they're dressed like animals. They tend to move quite well for me. This is Commonwealth, a snowman. So... Christmas type plush is still selling for me. This was a larger plush, 18 inches, and um, I sold it for $12. Like I said, I'm really sending out offers to get some of this bigger plush like that sold. It just takes a lot of space. Again, here's the Fiesta, Fiesta Scruffy Pink Llama, and it sold for $11.91. This is Boyd's Bear. These were some of the minis. I had picked these up at an estate sale where they were selling lots of Boyd's Bears and lots of really nice plush. And I paid $2, $3 for each of them. I think they charged me $3 each on this. I don't remember, but that's what I remember. I think it was. I decided to go ahead and put these two together and I ended up taking a best offer of $18 for them. This was um, from a estate sale. It's Boston Celtics glass from like the mobile gas station. It must have been some kind of promo that they were doing. And it sold for $13.75. I have a cheat sheet right here just to make sure my prices are accurate. But definitely watch for a lot of these older glasses, especially things with sports and the advertising. This is from Kids of America. It was a musical type plush. It's Valentine's Day still selling for me. And 
I sold it for $18.35. Now the thing about this one was when I opened it up to test it, it did have a corroded battery in there. Not bad, just I always make a point of taking a picture of what the battery box looks like. And you can usually tell because the wire isn't going to be quite as shiny as it would have been because of the corrosion. But I usually clean it up with a Q-tip or a washcloth with some alcohol or some apple cider vinegar, something like that, just to clean it up. If it's really bad, usually I don't try. I just go ahead and get rid of it because, you know, you, you just don't know how much the, the damage is from the corrosion. But if it's just a little bit, I go ahead and still just make a note of it so that when they open it up, and like I've said before, make sure you always take pictures of your batteries areas because, you know, I had a potential scammer last month send me a picture of a battery thing that was totally corroded. And it wasn't mine because I had a picture of mine. And I told them if they didn't, you know, stop, I was going to report them to eBay. And then, of course, they said, oops, sorry, we bought two of them. Yours is perfect. This is a Kset dual um, binder. We did pick these up at Finders Keepers. I'm pretty much getting through a lot of that. I still have a few backpacks, I think, left um, and some of the puzzles. But we went on the day, the first weekend that they opened. Everything was a dollar that day. It's never been the same since. But it sold for $18.35. This is from Mattel. It is a Barbie plush. The little It usually has a little collar thing that says B on it, but the tag also does say Barbie. Um, lots of different um, breeds of dogs in this series. This one was from 2018. They almost always have a little outfit on, um, usually like a ballerina. And I sold this for $8.05. I had to share this just because I love when I can find Levi's and Oshkosh Bagosh little overalls for kids. And I I'm pretty sure I picked this up this year at a, an estate sale, probably paid a dollar for it or so, and it sold for $15.01. This was from our online estate sale. This is a Hasbro Glow Worm. The, um, a lot of these came from Wendy's. I think there was some that was released by Hasbro, but a lot of the ones, I did have the original package for them, and that you can see it says Wendy's. I, when I got these, it's one of the first things I showed in one of the first hauls from that estate sale, and I got a box full of them. Now, I s listed most of the new still in the package ones, and I've sold a few of them for like 30 and $40, but I had a whole bunch that were loose, and I thought, if I put them all together, sell them as a lot, it would be an instant collection and I could, you know, charge a good price for them. Well, that didn't happen. Um, so I just decided a couple of weeks ago to end the listing and relist everything individually. And I, I've sold a couple of them, I think. And this one sold for $17.95. This was like a little butterfly one. <laughs> this plush. I sold this the same day I listed it. Love when you have those sales. But then you think, did I underprice it? But it's okay. This was from, again, the online estate sale um, from Highbed. And I remember when we um, featured this in the hall, it was just this little plush wolf. But the scrubs that it had on said Richard Wolf. And I didn't know anything about that. But while we were still videoing it, Robert looked that up. And it's like a company who makes the tools for like colonoscopies and stuff. So obviously somebody had a search probably because I sold it that quickly on Richard Wolf and sold it the same day for the $19.95. Tie, I sold this tie. It's a St. Bernard dog from 2000. Didn't even have its little ear tag and he sold for $26.95. So definitely always check. Not all of them are worth, you know, this amount, but a lot of times, especially like the dogs, sometimes they are. 
This is Wish Pets. Her, its name was Tallulah, obviously a giraffe. Usually the Wish Pet tags tell you the date and the name of the animal. I sold Tallulah for best offer of $10. These next two are Linux um, silverware. I bought a whole bunch of these at an estate sale. I think it was a 12 piece play setting. It was half price day. It was going to be $30, but I think I had a bunch of stuff and they charged me $60 for everything I bought that day. And it was piles, clothes and all kinds of stuff. Um, I sold, I took everything, most of my silverware sets I've been doing four piece sets of like spoons and teaspoons and everything. I sold this teaspoon set and then these forks, the salad forks, for $59.20. And then this um, new era cookware, definitely when you're at estate sales, pick up the pots and pans. If they're heavy, check them. I hadn't heard of new era, but it was stainless steel, very heavy. This particular one had an egg, egg poacher with it. I think I picked up two different types that, that day. I think they were $10 each. That's why there's a number two on this because I had two different sets and I needed to keep them separate. Um, I ended up taking a best offer of $60 on this. And my point with that is, yes, I had it listed for 90, but when I get offers, I almost always go ahead and go check comps again. Because if something's been listed a month or a year, the you know, the price could change. And I've found a lot of times also that my price is way too low based on recent comps. And you know, you, you deal with that, you know, by either ending it and raising your price or, you know, not accepting the offer, you know, you do you. But this, I had sold one for $70, but there were others now that were listed lower than mine. And I thought, you know, I've had it a while. I'm just gonna accept the $60 offer and be good. This is Hasbro Quest from Camelot. It's a little two-headed dragon from that movie. And it sold for $11.66. I love character toys. I'll pick up most. Not all of them are great, but a lot of them are my bread and butter, $8 to $12. This is Jelly Cat. It's a little um, soft book plush, and it sold for best offer of $9. This, Danbury Mint. I picked this up at this um, yard sale we went to this summer. It's like 23 mile road stretch. Um, I bought a bunch of Boyd's Bear stuff from that yard sale and some silverware and some other collectible stuff. It didn't have its box. Um, I had also sold like a huge uh, clock that was just amazing. But this one, um, it also had writing on the bottom. I think I paid $10 for it and ended up selling it for $80.96. So I had pre-packed that and it was ready to go. This is from um, North American Bear Company. This is the Muffy Vanderbeer, Vanderbeer series. There's a lot of them out there. They're about eight inches tall. And they're usually dressed in different type clothing. Um, this one was called The Sewing Lesson. And it sold for $8.96. This is Carter's Child of Mine Brown Rattle. Always, if you see Carter's monkeys, definitely check the comps on them. Because some of them do really well. And then there's, there's like one that's got like an orange ribbon on his neck. He's excellent to find. There's some that have like blue stripes on their feet and ears. There's just a lot of Carter's monkeys. Um, this was just a little small five inch rattle plush and it sold for $17.95. This was a Build-A-Bear monkey plush. It's got a smiling face. There's some that don't have smiling faces. Um, this is like the second one I've sold recently and it sold for best offer of $9. But I'm good with that because a lot of times I've paid a dollar or less for them. 
This was from my online estate sale. Again, this is a Shoney's Bear from 1995. The, I must have bought a, a lot that was just all Shoney's Bears. I have tons of them. Um, and this one sold for $13.45. This was a Nativity Globe I picked up at an estate sale. I actually picked up two of them. This one didn't have the boxes with them. So yeah, Robert packed this for me. And I sold it for best offer of $20. But yeah, not my favorite things to find. Because they're just a lot of it. Unless you have the box with the little styrofoam insert that protects it. They can be a lot of work. But Robert's an excellent packer. This is Gon's Webkins. It was just a Persian cat. It did have its sealed tag still attached to it and I sold it for eight dollars and five cents. This is Disney Figment. I've seen some posts where I guess something recently was released and lots of people were having to buy were buying it at Disneyland, Disney World and selling it. I don't know. I don't remember what it was. Some kind of cup maybe. I don't remember. But there must be something happening with figment, something new, because there's this big uproar about it. But I sold him for best offer of $10. And then this is an Aurora Husky Dog Wolf Plush. Use all those keywords. And he sold for best offer of $10. Now here's my big sell on eBay this week. These Dandy Hoppy Hopster Rabbit Plush. I think this is one of the ones that I got at the 100 mile yard sale that starts in Withville, Withville, Virginia and runs on into um, North Carolina. My sisters and I do it together every year. Um, this one had a little bit of um, like discoloration. So I didn't price it as high as I normally would. And he ended up selling for $78.50. So definitely keep your eye out. These, I think Dandy puts them out, MTY International, um, but they're large bunnies, 18, 19 inches. They almost always have like a design in their bellies, colorful ears, just very highly sought after. And then here's some of my Facebook orders. This tie, Attic Treasures, this little unicorn I sold for $13.00. This was a Harley Davidson Hog Biker Plush. He sold for $8. This was an Eden Mrs. Rabbit from Peter Rabbit. She sold for $12. And this brass, look at this brass um, crane. I had it listed for $89. It's been listed since earlier this summer when we bought all of the brass and somebody said, would I take $60 for it? And I went for it and it sold for $60. And then this is my Mercari order for those four days. This is a Russ Lullaby Lamb plush. It sold for $7 on Mercari. And then I had two Bonanza orders. We picked this up at the estate sale where I didn't buy any toys, but I bought the House of Hat and Santa and some other um, collectible items. These we picked right up out of a kitchen cabinet and I sold the two John Deere mugs for $9.95. And then Richard Simmons, I've told, I've talked about these. This is the food mover kits. I believe this was actually sealed, but it had some um, conditions with the packaging. So I went ahead and unsealed it. That way I can also show everything that's in the kit. Um, but it's just these little things that you keep track of what you've eaten or drank or whatever. But a lot of these do well. Something about the colors and maybe the years that they were released. Some sell for more than others. But I sold this one on Bonanza for $24.95. I think Robert picked it up for 50 cents or a dollar at an estate sale. And then I had this order on Etsy. This is a Charm Company clown plush from 1988. 
I've mentioned this before. If you're going to ever consider cross-listing like plush to Etsy, the vintage stuff, I always, and I didn't even know when I started this years and years and years ago, I always put the date of the plush in my title. And that way right now, as I'm starting to add more and more items to Etsy, I'm just sorting through my um, listings on eBay and picking the vintage stuff that automatically has the dates. And then eventually I'll go back and things that I know are vintage, I'll try to figure out what decade because it's basically about what decade because you can always send, sell vintage hard goods on there. You know what I mean? Or um, handmade, homemade stuff. So, and this bear sold for $37.95. So, I think that's it. We're still selling some clothes. Nothing grand to share. You know, uh, and I will as they come up. Like, I just sold a pair of pants for $44. And it'll be in one of my next what solds. Just because I think those are unique. But, you know, otherwise, clothes are blah, blah, blah. All right, don't forget, I'm pretty sure, unless we have extenuating circumstances, I'm going to do another live working um, video on Wednesday at 11. Um, probably lasts like hour, hour and a half usually. Just talking about stuff. Put your questions of anything that you're wanting to talk about. I'll be doing shipping. I'm hoping to have two or three others with me and then, you know, Maybe you guys can pick their brains about stuff that you're um, wanting to talk about. Because all of us are unique in what we're selling. Some of us are big time sellers, volume sellers, and then some of us, you know, are specialized niches or beginners. And I, I think it's it's good to kind of have a, a wide variety of people to talk about, you know, their experiences and their concerns when reselling. All right. Bye.